достойной правдой. Мы достойны того, чтобы узнать факты. The atrocities committed by Russian troops in Bucha, Irpin, and elsewhere in Ukraine have horrified the world. Civilians massacred, shot dead with their hands tied, women raped in front of their young children, bodies crudely burned, dumped in mass graves, or just left lying in the street. The reports are so shocking and so sickening, it's no wonder your government is seeking to hide them from you. Your president knows that if you could see what was happening, you would not support his war. He knows that these crimes betray the trust of every Russian mother who proudly waves goodbye to her son as he heads off to join the military. And he knows that they are a stain on the honor of Russia itself. A stain that will only grow larger and more indelible every day as this war continues. But don't just take my word for it. All you need is a VPN connection to access independent information from anywhere in the world. And when you find the truth, share it. Those responsible will be held to account. And history will remember who looked the other way. Ваш президент обвиняется в совершении войны преступлений. Но я не верю, что он действует от вашего имени. Good afternoon. My name is Ronaldo McKenzie and welcome to another episode of the Neoliberal Round podcast. That was the voice of British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who was speaking in an address recorded at 101 Downing Street to the people of Russia. Today, the title of our podcast is The Russian People Deserve the Truth. You deserve the truth. Is a VPN the answer? Again, today we will discuss for our topic, for our podcast today, the Russian people deserve the truth. You deserve the truth. Is a VPN the answer? afternoon. I am Ronaldo McKenzie and welcome back to the Neoliberal Round podcast. There's a lot that's happening in the world today. And so we will get to the news momentarily. But the topic for to- today, the topic for discussion today is the Russian people deserve the truth. You deserve the truth is a VPN, which is a virtual, a virtual privacy network. The answer is a VPN the answer and actually i just installed one of those on my uh, on on my system because i came under tremendous attack and if you guys can uh if you guys if you guys can get a vpn i i must say maybe you should check it out because lately there there have been a lot of spyware malware breaches attack uh um, and then, of course, I will be putting out some news stories and articles on the neoliberal.com. Um, there's a section on the neoliberal.com website called um, World News. Well, it was called Travel News. We just updated it to Travel and World News. But we're going to add another feature to the front called Ru- World and Russian News. And we have news that speak that for, um, we have news that we have missed since February, which we will which we will provide on our website with pictures and images and so and links where you can get up to date information about what's happening. But what we know is because coupled with the disinformation campaign and this whole issue of information and communication, there's also the issue of privacy. And recently, 
my privacy and my security came was attacked and several other people be- because of what's happening and it's and and um and I am in and I have been very concerned about that and when I actually put the VPN on my phone and on my network and added I- identity theft and several other features I pulled up over 300 breaches now in fact I believe um, the VPN I also added the identity theft the identity theft feature and the VPN indicated that the identity theft I got a report yesterday saying that somebody that my that T-Mobile or somebody used my driver's license to 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 access some benefit or to apply for something from T-Mobile and then of course some time ago if you've been following me my information um i then yes yesterday while on the internet some um you could tell every three seconds there was a malware attack every three to five seconds there was a a malware or or a spyware attack and then because i have the most up-to-date features on my phone and on my devices now because of the security and the threat i can actually pull up a report of all the persons and where they are located, people who have been trying to access my information, people who are trying to go on my website, to, people who are trying to see what to, to go to see what to see what sites I'm visiting. I am since I put this VPN network on my fo- on my phone and my devices, I have detected hundreds of breaches and so coupled with the here we are talking about disinformation and misinformation. Con- campaign please remember that, that, that there are those who are trying to misinform who are also and or disinform who are utilizing various threats systems threats through web applications and so on and so that is important in the 21st century there has been tremendous in addition to you thinking about your health and thinking about your financial health as well but you also have to think about your web application and your security, privacy and security, especially if peop- for people who write a lot, bloggers and writers have come un- under a lot of attack. And recently I, I reported sometime on my blogger news about that. But today, the story is about this. The Russian people deserve the truth. You deserve the truth is a VPN the answer. And I was quite intrigued when I heard Boris, Bar- M- Miss. Prime Minister Boris Johnson from Britain speaking about a VPN because if you are not too familiar with computer language and and IT, you won't be familiar. But I'm going to tell you this. Everyone should be familiar with VPN in this country, especially with what's going on in the world. Because we live in the 21st century where everything is driven by computers, by networks and by systems. And everything can be attacked through systems And I am telling you today, I have come on the tremendous amount of attack. And if, and I'm learning more and more each day about what VPN is and privacy networks and what, and safety and putting various safety features and so on on your phone. And some of you might have pop-up cookies that pop up on your screen when you go on a website. It is not, it is good when you have a pop-up, a cookie pop-up because it, it, they are telling you that, hey, we use cookies okay and we we use cookies and certain cash that we attach to your systems for so that we can remember you so when you see cookies you can actually always remember you can set up in your computer you unless some people you want some people like to remember they don't like people don't like the difficulty of having to remember stuff because with all the things that we have to remember, passwords and websites and so on, it poses a problem for many people, especially people who are busy on the internet, whose life, who work remotely and who are and persons, who, especially given COVID and so on, and the fact that more people are working remotely, this, this privacy and security threat, this network threat has become, has increased significantly over the past months. And then with the Russian war and the disinformation campaign, significantly we find a lot of spyware and malware attack. So it's very important that as people, that we, we ensure that we keep, we, we are constantly changing our passwords and we're constantly watching for 
we, we constantly clear out our cache and or if if the if if a site has cookies we it's sometimes it's good to review or to read the cookie policy. Okay, those things are important. Okay? So but to get back to the story for today, the Russian people deserve the truth. You deserve the truth. Is a VPN the answer? And before I begin, I am going to just let you know that I actually have a poll. I have a poll that's going on right now, and you can only access this poll if you go to my, our, our podcast via Spotify. If you go to our podcast f- via Spotify, you will see the poll, and I'm actually trying to bring up the poll. The poll question asks this question. We are, we, are, with the new, we are asking this, and this is courtesy of the Neoliberal Corporation research team. When thinking about American individualism and free speech, Do you believe that all media should be regulated? Again, question. When thinking about American individualism and free speech, do you believe that all media should be regulated? And these are the options. A, yes, but only social and alternative media. B, yes, but only mainstream media. C, both A and B. D. No. Media should not be regulated at all. And E. Not sure. Again, we are doing a poll, and the poll is in conjunction to a story that we are carrying, what we had aired earlier, and we are continuing that theme of it as we look at the issues of power and the issues of communication. And the title of the article that we carried was in the Neoliberal Post or the Neoliberal Journal and Commentary via the Neoliberal.com. You can also access it at RonaldoCMcKenzie.com. And we also carried a podcast episode where we talk about communication is to make popular what was the monopoly. And we referenced this new drive and Obama's and we talked about inside Obama's fight against this information campaign. And this is not, a, this is not to, uh, attacking Barack Obama, just so you know. I'm not attacking anyone. Okay, but I believe CNN had, had, put, uh, had published an article and posted up his image and, in, and reported on the work that he's going, doing, especially in light of the fact that he had experienced disinformation. A disinformation campaign had levied against him when they had, with, with the issue of birtherism, when, they, when persons had said that he was not an American as a way, as a way to dilute. And that was a strategy. I, I talk about strategy. Power uses strategy to establish, to maintain, or, or, to, in, or to increase, or to create power. For, for, the, for position for, as we, as for position but the people were using I tell you I am for competition but people constantly use unfair tactics the unfair tactics is this smear campaign or a disinformation campaign that they had run against Barack Obama selling a lie telling, telling Americans that he was born in in, how, in, in Indonesia I believe or Afghanistan and that he and 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 that he was not he's not an american so that's the first thing so as i said to you some time ago in a in a podcast episode how people have a tendency to redefine you to redefine you to provide caricatures of you they you know that's the issue of power when they try to define you not you outside of that which is external to you they t- power tries to ex- to, to, to maintain power or to extend or increase power because they they try to power defines you or persons out who who are using strategy or various strategy to hold on or to create power the issue of power they they define you they try to define you and the thing about power is that out oh, the definition of you the understanding of you is not important how you view yourself and when I talk about slavery and reimagining the black man or the black woman or a slave with, within slavery, it's, we talk about the issue of people, they were treated as so less, as less than individuals, less than human. They were, in other words, persons, they, they, pers- they didn't have, they could not understand or explain who they are. Or to the, they, they never had the, they, the, the conception of self was beyond them. Only the external 
could provide the conception of self. Only the, ex- the external can provide that identity of self. And here we talk about Barack Obama, who, again, the issue of power, as, as, as others try to, to redefine and recreate him, outside, and irrespective of, and, that, and by the way, you see the power dynamics that's continuing in the world. Here is a black man wanting to run for president, to lead. But what they, in order, to, they, you, you come in there, their strategy, as the strategy was to what? To disinform or to misform, to mislead, so as to show doubt in people's minds about his candidacy, candidacy or his ability to lead. And not necessarily, to, but also, it's not really to, to show doubt, but also applying unfair tactics using a kind of information. And guess what? The problem with this is that mainstream media was part of this because they were also facilitating the particular mis- or disinformation of this fact. But it was a strategy. And the, the, the fact of the matter, we talk about there are different kinds of truth. You have the coherent theory of truth or knowledge of coming to truth. There is the, and there is also the pragmatic theory the correspondence theory. There are various theories of knowledge and various theories of truth. And depending on the cultures that we have, when we talk about American society, when you look at American society, the kind of truth, the kind of th- the theory of knowledge or is that, that we subscribe to is one that is pragmatic. And we talk about pragmatic truth. In other words, that which is useful. When we talk about, okay, when you, when, when you approach, not anything is true. Oh, the thing is true for the, to the pragmatist only if it is useful. Only if it is useful. And so for, for the pragmatist, that's where they approach. And for many persons who utilize misinformation and disinformation, which are people who are trying to maintain, establish, or create power, the first step, as I said, they redefine or recreate an understanding of you irrespective of who you see. So the value of self. So they do not, so the thing is, there is a disrespect of self. Part of disinformation is this disrespect that the person have who seeks to mis, in, who seeks to misrepresent someone else's idea of themselves by going beyond that person's representation of the self to paint a picture of who that person is utilizing communication, which is to make popular what was the monopoly? And if they have a control of the news or have, or have control of certain outlets or certain systems or have control of information, then if they present that news, then the people who are receiving that news, if they have no other way to access news, then that is news. And, it's, and, the part, and, the, and the fact of the problem in this country, because of the ideological and the political divide that we have in this country, people are unwilling to go outside. And this is and there's another issue. People in this country, people are smart. People understand ide- ideologies. People understand ideologies. And that's the beauty about this country. But what is the problem is that people, some people use unfair tactics and have hijacked the truth. And an and, and unwillingness to go beyond. So if I am, let us say I am an independent person who, who, who is of a particular party. And someone who is probably, who identifies as, as independent is running. That person shares information. But be, and I receive that information. But I receive no other information. Do you know why? Because I'm locked in. I am myopic. I am narrow-minded and parochial. I am locked. I only get news from one source. Without understanding the fact that people are corrupt. Okay? There's an issue of integrity and reputation. If you only identify with one particular source, then that particular source will slant the news based on that particular source. And it is not... It is not... It does not... That's not... That is not... uh, provides any kind of integrity to reality and to fact and to all things when you look at all things that exist 
The, va- the world is vast. So we are doing a disservice to reality and to truth and to perspective because the fact of the matter is there are more than one or two or three. There are several perspectives that we have to contend with and we have to consider. So I invite you to go to the poll that we are doing in relation to this. So when we talk about this, so Barack Obama is in a very interesting position because he, he was attacked. But at the same time, we have to be careful. We have to be careful about this drive to regulate because while we drive, while we have, while, while we react to something, and, re- and we cannot be reactive to the point where we only focus on what is immediately in front of us, which is part of the problem with this. And I talk about this gun reform law and we're, say- and we're talking about we have to look at, we-, we have to be more comprehensive and interdisciplinary when we approach issues in life because we will, get- we will focus on the wrong things. Especially when, when, there- when a social factor is a result of several different factors that you cannot properly deal with the particular social factor without dealing with several different things at se- at one time. But so- some people have the tendency of singling out things. Not you know why they have a tendency because different different issues carries with it different groups. Different issues with it carries with it different privilege. So while the grand people who have Grand Theft Auto don't want us to regulate video games and, and so on and so and access to that and how and, and how ch- that there you have you have cheerleaders for different groups and then the people for gun who have the who owners of gun they have their reason why they have a particular position. So. And, and I, as I said to you, you keep, that is why we can never effectively deal with social issues in society if we continue to look at it in a piecemeal way and single them out. We have to come together and apply a comprehensive me. But we are reactive. We, we are very reactive in society. What have we reacted to? So we have to be careful about reacting to implementing controls so as to correct a particular issue, because there is a saying that that old time people say, you, um, "Jump out! You, what, what did you jump out of frying pan, land in a fire?" That's Jamaican parlance. Okay, there are persons who say, "Okay, let me get out of this situation," and when, in an effort to get out of one situation, you tr- you transplant one situation for first for a worse one, or supplant one for another. That's and that's part of the problem. So we have to be careful about in an effort to do one thing, then there's something else that's happening. And so this brings us to the next point, to the story that we, that we are considering today. The Russian people deserve the truth. You deserve the truth is a VP of the answer. First of all, can we even, can we even come to truth when you study truth? And you understand that there is a coherent theory of truth. There's a correspondence theory of truth. And there's a pragmatic theory of truth. And then you start looking at the various concepts of logic. The various concepts of logic. There is the inductive method of doing logic. And then there is the deductive method of doing logic. We talk about syllogism. But even logic have its limitations. How we do logic in the world. Logic has limitations. So, no one is devoid of subjectivity. We all, we come, to, and, and I think that's part of the understanding when we approach anything. We have to approach with that understanding. So, we, there is, it, as, we, as we think about power, as we think about privilege, power, position, and status in society, and we look at it from from the beginning of from and if you study plato and i think i told you that i'm working on a book on that deals with that topic 
it, it, and I talk about, and there's a, a paper, a featured paper in RenaldoCMcKenzie.com on our website. And if you go to rmcKenzie.academia.edu, there's a featured paper where I talk about the development of privilege and power, position and status within the foundations of historical literature. And that's where I'm starting from. When you begin to study the found history from Herodotus and Homo and Plato, Homer and Plato all the way up, you'll, you'll see that tendency. And I, and I have spoken at length about this issue. At length about this issue. So, it's rather interesting how context and current situations determine and drive policy and positions on issues. When we begin to think about this topic of the Russian people deserving the truth, you deserve the truth, is VPN the answer? When you think about that, and actually, this is, this is what British Prime Minister is saying, the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, that's, and he ends his statement by saying that, the Russian people deserve the truth. You deserve the truth. And he says, and I asked the question, is VP an answer? Is the answer? Because he alluded to that, and we're going to talk about that in the next segment after this break. But if you listen to what we made, a, we played, we played, we, we had a podcast episode some time ago. And if you go to my YouTube, Ronaldo.McKenzie, you, you, I, and, or any of my news feeds, I, and I talk about the, the fact that um, I share a video where that I had obtained where someone interviewed Russians, someone was on the ground in Russia, interviewing Russians, trying to get their mood. What do you think about the war? And most of, many of the Russians are saying that this is an important war because Putin is trying, is on a world saving mission, try, or a saving mission, savior mission, trying to denazify Ukraine. And that's the lie that he is telling these people. So it's okay. And what we and and many people believe that. And I said and I say to you, we have a responsibility as people to keep the scrutiny. We have a responsibility to question our government and to hold them accountable and to ask questions of them about everything. So we'll be right back after these messages. And when we come back, we are going to delve into this topic. The Russian people deserve the truth. You deserve the truth. Is a VPN the answer? When we come back in the next segment, we will go into it. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back to the Neoliberal Round podcast, and we are talking about the Russian people deserve the truth. You deserve the truth. Is a VPN the answer? It's rather interesting how context and current situations determine and drive policy and positions on issues, such as those concerning information and communication. And I tell you, it's an issue and strategy for power, for and of power. For the reason that when a dynamic is changing, thereby creating a paradigm shift in the currency and level of power, position, or privilege of people's dynamics coached in certain values, whatever policy that holds it in place becomes a problem. I'm going to say this again. It is rather interesting when you think about, as, as you think about this particular message from the Prime Minister of Britain, it is that, as you think about it, on that, vis-a-vis that, on the, on the backdrop of that, I'm, I'm saying to you that it is rather interesting how context and current situations determine and drive policy and positions on issues, such as those concerning information and communication. And I tell you, 
It's an issue and strategy for and of power. For the reason that when a dynamic is changing, thereby creating a, po- a paradigm shift in the currency, level of power, position or privileges of people's dynamics coached in certain values, whatever policy that hold, that holds it in place becomes a problem. Case in point, I carried a story about Inside Obama's fight against disinformation in the neoliberal post published April 11, 2022, where I wrote, who controls the narratives in the 21st century that has seen the decentralization of communication and control of information? Thanks to social and alternative media. Therefore, no one really has control What we have is a plethora of perspectives, staples of information for us to access and analyze. Information that was once reserved. This is necessary as it helps to realize the goal of communication, which is to make popular what was the monopoly. And man has always challenged or obstructed access to information to increase, maintain, or establish power power or hold over a society or a people. However, social media challenges and is an affront to this power, even as it helps communication realize its aims of making popular what was or is the monopoly. I concluded the the article saying, we should be very nervous and suspicious of major news their political supporters, and wealthy sponsors who are leading the charge to reconsolidate their control over the news and information. What moral authority do they have to impose their control that has been at best political and divisive when social media affects their position and power and the access and and decentralization of information pose problems and threats for them and their narratives and what they hope to achieve. And that was from the neoliberal post in a story that I had submitted and published uh, several days, about three days ago. So getting back to this particular, to, to this particular story as it relates to British Prime Minister, British Prime Minister's comment about you deserving the truth, people deserving the truth. And I say, is VPN the answer? Indeed, we are constantly emphasizing this aim of communication so that as a society, we can understand it fully. As we look at power and the dynamics of humanity in society, that communication is to make popular what was the monopoly. And this war highlights the importance of access to information and communication. So while we are here in America, exploring ways to regulate independent news media so as to control its independence and ability to put out various news, Russians are having to deal with a highly regulated news that serves the Kremlin, which is devoid of a diversity of perspectives for them to choose from, and British Prime Minister is and the British Prime Minister is here recommending ways that they can avert this so that they can get access to independent news media that provide staples of news that is independent and varied so as to facilitate proper engagement of the news and information to get a balanced and comprehensive perspective free of monopoly. Indeed, recently, Boris Johnson, British Prime Minister, said in a statement, the the, the Russian people deserve the truth. You deserve the truth. In a recent recorded address to the Russian which he began and ended in Russian. Russians deserve the truth. You deserve to know the facts. The atrocities of Russian troops in Boka, Herpen, and other Ukrainian cities shocked the whole world. Mass killings of civilians. Their hands were tied and shot. Women were raped in front of their young children. Incompletely burnt corpses are dumped in mass graves or simply left to rot in the street. The evidence is so shocking, so terrifying. It's no wonder your government, and he's talking about the Russian government, 
is hiding these facts from you. Your president is accused of war crimes, but I do not believe that he is acting on your behalf, Johnson said in a statement. In closing, I will say this. Putin's ability to manipulate the news stems from his monopoly of the news and information. This is done so as to create, maintain, or increase power. Because then he can justify an action on a reality that he has made up and sold to a people whose access to popular reality is limited by said power, who has utilized every elaborate mechanism to ensure this. However, there are ways around such despotic and totalitarianism and dis or miss or limited and slanted information devoid of the popular. A VPN, a virtual private network, can help you get news anywhere in the world without or access news anywhere in the world without the interference from those who seek to control for their advantage. A virtual private network can help you get news anywhere in the world without the interference from those who seek to control for their advantage. And just so you know, every phone does not come with a VPN. And there are some, um, there are some phone services that provide it with you that's part of the plan, but every phone service don't. And recently, I noticed, as I said to you in the beginning of the podcast, I've come under a lot of attacks, spyware, malware, I, 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 go, I use a lot of sensitive information. I, I go over a lot of sensitive information every day. And I have access to some of those. And, for some, and recently, my IP address was blocked. Because I never had a VPN. And, and then some person... And my computer was pretending as if it was in Russia or some other country. And... So I am telling you, one of the ways you can find out if you have a VPN on your phone, if you have an iPhone device, you can go to general, go into your, go to your settings icon on your phone. And then if you scroll down, the, if you scroll down, it should be there right on the personal hotspots where you have your airplane mode, Wi-Fi, you have your, you have your, your ID, your Apple ID, so on and so forth. Apple ID suggestions, airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, cellular personal hotspot um, then you have VPN and then you, ha- you have the VPN right under that okay just so you so that is how you can um, you can and you can click on v- and it will tell if it click on it and if it, if it says you need to connect it immediately or have it if it if it does not say connected then you don't have it and not only that once you put a VPN on your phone you have to check it Ever so often, and whenever you are on your phone or using the internet or whatever, Wi-Fi, whatever you're on, you ensure that you check it periodically. And when you leave your home and come back, that v- you lose that VPN, you have to reconfigure it or re-add it and ensure that you're adding it once you leave your home, just so you know. And even while you have your VPN, there are people who are still trying to attack your, go around the VPN to attack you. And they will try to disable it. So you have, and that is why you have to constantly check to see if it's still on. Especially if you're somebody who uses personal information, who access and use the internet a lot. Okay? And, that, and just so you, that's important. And the VPN, uh, several different um, phone agencies, I have a particular um, uh, um, um, uh, 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 um, telephone, telecommunication provider. Uh, they, I will not say their name unless... if. if once I just so you know we once we can advertise on our website in our feed once a particular ad agency has reached out to me and has invite and would like me to 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 utilize their information then yes we will add but for now I will not I will not promote any particular any particular brand or platform but there are several but I will talk about all of them Verizon has a VPN I believe they also, and I think they use their VPN through McAfee. And you also have, Apple usually has a, usually has, it's a very strong, we, we, with a very secure network back in the days. But now I have several um, Apple products and they have come under tremendous attack. So you still need a VPN, even with your, your, with your Apple devices. Um, and when you have your VPN, one of the things that you can do with, Xfinity has one, 
I believe um, Spectrum has one, Comcast, and so on. One of the thing that one of the things you can do with the VPN, just so you know, uh, I downloaded this app called Digital Secure, and you it you can it has web security, Wi-Fi security. If you click on web security, you have to ensure that it's set up. You set up so that to put the, if if the icon is not on to protect my browsing, it's not working. So not only should you have it, but you have to constantly check that it is working the way how you want it to work. Because as I said to you, people are always creating ways to break into your system, to break your privacy, to break. And, and as I said, people are just as you know, people are always updating vaccines and medicines and so on, because vaccines keep mutating. The way of the way how spalware and, and malware work is that people, human beings are constantly working and to recreate ways to break into your computer and so on. And sometimes some of these very same companies that you do business with, I mean, you have to be very careful that you, especially when you have free service or trial service, when you apply for trial service, eventually you, you, your computer will come under greater attack. And then when you ask for a particular protection, they're going to say, well, you only have the trial service. But if you, but if you put a higher level of service, then we'll be able to protect that. But my, I'm saying to you that that's part of the problem. You know, I, I, I'm suspicious of this particular narrative where you, you put a trial service on your, on your device. And as soon as you put a trial service on your device or a free trial service, all of a sudden it finds tremendous amount of malware and spyware and attack. And it's telling you to purchase, to spend $259 to put an extra layer. So, I believe what needs to happen is persons who sell products, web services, companies, and so on, we have to also scrutinize, scrutinize their, scrutinize them and their modus operandi and, and how they work. Because this has become, this is actually becoming a serious issue for many people. Thank you for listening to the Nearly Bird Round podcast. And just so you know, we have a podcast. Uh, we have a, um, a poll that is going for those of us who are just, who did not hear this clearly. We have a poll as it relates to this need and this drive for people to want to regulate, to regulate information. And in one sense, it's, Re, it's reacting to to pure to it's reacting to to impure intentions to discredit individuals but in a in an effort to react sorry it's sorry it's it's where it's this issue and this drive to fight against disinformation campaigns can create a situation where we are impinging on the freedoms of people and creating problems that this particular issue might have eased. And so the, qu- the poll question is, when thinking about American individualism and free speech, do you believe that all media should be regulated? And we have five options, A, B, C, D, E. Yes, but only social and alternative media. Yes, the second one is yes, but only mainstream media. The C is both A and B. And D, no, no media should be regulated at all. And the last one is, I'm not sure. And you can go to to our Spotify podcast platform to to access the, the, um, the poll. And we will actually do this, repeat this poll later on on our websites after this particular poll has ended. Thank you so much for listening and we and and by the way we this poll will end next week thursday so we will provide the results of the poll for you please give us feedback give us a feedback and donate to this show https colon semi um uh, forward slash se- forward slash anchor.fm slash the neoliberal slash support or donate so you can donate to us by and, um, and if you are having problems with the donate button coming up for you, just reach out to us at the neoliberal core at the neoliberal.com. Or you can just give me a call. So you can uh, touch base with us at 
RinaldoCMcKenzie at gmail.com or the neoliberal at RinaldoCMcKenzie.com. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a great day. Visit us and follow us on our social media, our social media feeds, Twitter. You can go on my um, on my page, RinaldoCMcKenzie.com, and chat with me. Go to our contact page, to to the contact page, and you can shoot me an email, and um, or you could just um send us um send us a, um send us a send us some kind of feedback on on our feedback page as well but because but we would love to hear what you have to say about the program and about everything that's happening in society and about this particular issue continue to listen to the program and i hope you have a great day and by the way please share the program with your friends like us on facebook twitter and so on and so forth and subscribe to this show take care and have a great day Thank you again for listening to another episode of the ne- of the Neoliberal Round, brought to you by the Neoliberal Corporation, the Neoliberal Corporation, and this segment is sponsored by Anchor FM from Spotify. Take care.